Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy Groundhog Day. We missed we a missed, lot. We missed, we missed a lot. We missed a lot. What do we got? So what are your thoughts on the uh, guys you brought in today? Yeah, we brought in three new guys. I think that positions that will really help us. You know, obviously, Michael Martinez is a, a big one for us, um, both in size and in ability. Um, really excited about him. Obviously, losing Caleb Wilson, you know, to, to fill in at the tight end spot. Um, we knew that it was going to be a priority for us, and we recruited, identified Mike a long time ago. And uh, Derek Says did a really good job and developing a relationship. He had a great year at Matter Day this year, so we're just excited. I think he has a huge upside as a tight end. Um, you know, can do it all. You know, he's got the size, obviously, to be an inline tight end, but played flexed a lot for his high school, so can 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 get out into open spaces and catch the ball. He's got a huge catch radius. You know, probably the, one of the bigger tight ends I've ever had the opportunity to recruit. So we're excited about Mike. Um, Charles and Joko was another kid. Um, adds to the size. You know, a lot like a Mike Aziki or a Chase Cody in last year's class. So another bigger, taller target on the perimeter. Um, comes from great bloodlines. His brother is a tight end for the Cleveland Browns. His other brother is a wide receiver for the Dolphins. So um, Charles, I think, is a is a guy that has a huge upside. You know, as he continue to grow into his body, he's all a six four and change right now. So. Really excited about him. And then Noah Keeter is an outside linebacker that adds some depth for us, you know, and, and we needed to get bigger there too. And Noah's a 6'5 kid, 225 pounds. Um, we took Hayden Harris at, in December, and he was a 6'6 kid. So I think we've got some length on the edge, which is what we needed um, at our outside linebacker spot. So I really think all three of those guys will have an opportunity to come in here and contribute early. Do you expect to maybe add any more guys today or later in the period? You have no idea. You know, yeah. we have an opportunity for one or two more guys, but um, we'll see how that plays itself out. How, do you, how would you kind of characterize your happiness level with the class in general now that it's... We're, we're really happy with the, the guys we got. I think they're great fits for this university, um, have all their priorities in line, especially the academic and athletic combination with this university prides itself on. So I'm really excited about the guys we have. The numbers were down and, and as far as number of guys from last year. Did you want, did you target this number roughly or was there... No, I think you have to take what's out there. I don't think you just take, we have a spot, let's just take a guy and then he doesn't fit or he's not what you're looking for, you know, we're not looking for guys to come here and then leave. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that guys fit and they're exactly what we're looking for. And if they're not there, then we'll hold on to it and wait and see if we have somebody else. So. You had a lot of transfers announced in the past few weeks. Did that kind of change your, your outlook on the recruiting? No, guys? I mean, we knew most of the kids are grad transfers that didn't play. So you obviously know that they're going to move on and try to go play somewhere else. And we're trying to assist them in terms of where they can get to. But um, most of the times when you're dealing with the graduate transfers, it's because they're not playing at the last place. Usually guys aren't transferring if they're playing at the last place. So um, we try to assist those guys in any way we can in terms of where they're headed and what they can get accomplished. Would you say are going to get involved in the transfer market to bring some transfers in? I don't have any crystal ball to predict anything, so you have no idea. You know, there's always a reason someone is transferring. So, Would you um, say you're active in it now? I mean, are you looking at say potential any, transfers? We look at everybody that comes through, so it's not like we don't look at people. So, But you also have to find the right fit for this university. Um, and first and foremost, academically, so who's going who's gonna to be able to get in? So that's, that's the number one thing before we even look at anything else. So that's part of what we're the whole process is. So I wouldn't say we are or we aren't. We look every single day. I think every coach in the country looks at the transfer portal on a daily basis. But um, you also have to dig deep and find out why are they transferring. You know, that's, that's a big part of it. So sometimes guys are transferring because they're not playing at another place that what makes them think that they're going to play at your place. Or maybe there is a legitimate reason. So we take them all on an individual basis. So How has that transfer portal changed college football? I don't think it's changed it at all, to be honest with you. I mean, everybody took, we took two grad transfers last year. So um, if someone's going to transfer, they're going to reach out and get their release from their school and move on. So I think maybe the fans can track it better, but I don't think it's changed it from a coaching standpoint. This, go ahead, go ahead. This was your first uh, full cycle, recruiting cycle. How is it, what have you learned? What, what have you seen change since you did it back at I think there's a lot more transfers now, you know, and I think maybe sometimes kids don't make, um, get sold a bill of goods at one school and get there for a year, and now they're looking to get out, you know, because maybe it wasn't exactly what it was. You know, not all that glitters is gold. You know, you try to sort through it. I think we try to be real and transparent in terms of what we're recruiting here so that when we get kids here, they're going to stay here, and that's part of the process for us. So um, but I don't think it has changed much, to be honest with you. You've been here 15 months now. Have you been happy with, as a staff, your recruiting approach and results that you've gotten? Yeah, I have. In, in what way? Just the guys you brought in? Yeah, I think the class we brought in last year was outstanding, and I feel really good about this class. Do you have a recruiting coordinator? What's that? Do you have a recruiting coordinator on staff? On our full-time staff? Yeah. No, we just have a, a, a player personnel department that we that we 
do everything through that kind of coordinates everything for us but we don't have a point person on the staff itself no are you looking to hire more on the recruiting staff there's still some openings yeah i think they should time? be filled you got to go through the university system and how long they're posted for and all those things but we'll be full pretty soon yeah you did an eight clap eight thing on twitter or somebody with the football program did can you explain the genesis of that and yeah just when we announce when we're going to off when uh well, we don't announce it because we can't announce anything. But um, you know, when kids can expect to, as we move forward in the process, when we're, when we're, when kids will be will be offered and will be on the eighth of every month. So will they only be made public on the eighth, or will that be the only? We can't day? make them public, so well, we don't, that's got nothing to do with us. So okay, so we can't say we've offered Ben. Right. That's that's part of the recruiting rules. The kid can say whenever he gets offered. That's when I think it goes public. But we're not allowed to comment on the recruitment of anybody until they sign their national letter of intent. So right. I couldn't say, hey, Joe Johnson at such yeah. and such high school has just been, I've offered him a scholarship. It doesn't work that way. Having all of those scholarship offers go out together on one day, why Why is that kind of important? Or why would why we What's that? for that? Having all of the scholarship offers go out together. Because you're talking about day. it right now. <laughs> so, is that something you, you thought about? Like you wanted to have Yeah, well, we put together? some thought into it, yeah. Do you, do you have a new uh, linebacker coach to announce at this point? Yeah, we announced that, didn't we? Jason Kafusi is our linebacker coach. Okay. What does so, he what does he kind of bring? He came in from uh, Nevada, so yeah. he's coaching our outside linebackers. So um, got a world of experience, was a heck of a player at Utah back in the day. Um, was at Weber State, was a coordinator at Weber State, so it's coordinated defense and has a real good understanding of that and then was coaching the defensive ends at um, at Nevada. So he's one of the, the real up and coming guys in this profession and we were really excited to add him to the staff. Who will, who will coach special teams? Derek Sage is going to be the special teams coordinator. You had said you uh, early signing period that you were looking to bring in maybe six or seven by signing day. Were there well, some... depending on what we have available. So sure. We're, you were there know, some guys still, that there's still, you know, this is the first day you can sign kids. So right. you know we're not done, but we can't announce anything until we're finalized here. So are there some positions that you'd still like to maybe find a few? We guys? take anybody anywhere. So it's not. Well, I mean, we think we've addressed needs, so we're not. We don't have any gaps anywhere, but. You're obviously looking for more players um, if they fit the profile, both academically and athletically. Justin Fry is the new offensive, offensive coordinator. coordinator. How will his role change? How will, how will play calling be handled? We'll go through that in the spring. So we've got a ton of time before we open up against Cincinnati. So you know, we'll work through all those different things at that point in time. But he'll assume a little bit bigger role, especially in game planning and things like that. So. Why did you want to move Coach Fry to that offensive coordinator? Because I think he's he's a really bright coach, and being around him, I think he obviously earned it. You know, the opportunity to kind of take that next step from being just a position coach to a coordinator, and he did did a ton of it last year. You know, it just it just really wasn't in name. Um, you know, so now he has the title and kind of rolled it that way. So you got about thirty guys leave the team since you took over. Have you do you feel like you've been able to fill those holes pretty well at this point? Yeah, we feel really comfortable where our depth is and where we are right now. How do you feel about your, your walk-on program that you have here? I think it's really good this year. Um, you know, last year, obviously, we were just getting into it, but I feel really, really strong about the, the walk-ons that, that we're bringing in in this class. You know, I think we got guys who can contribute and add depth to us. I think it's a real important part. Um, the unique aspect that we have is that getting in-state kids to stay home. Um, obviously, being a state university, I think that's a big deal. And so we've made a concerted effort in the walk-on program, and I think uh, – It'll show with the kids that will show up here when we start in June. What's the difference between a preferred walk-on and a regular walk-on? Well, who gets invited to camp? You know, so you're limited by the number of how many players you can bring to camp. So if, when I think maybe that's, I don't know what the, who came up with the term, but if someone just shows up after school starts and wants to play football, i.e. Rudy, that's a walk-on. But if someone was actually recruited and promised a position in camp, you know, obviously, you have 85 scholarships, but you bring 110 to camp. So who are those, those other guys in that mix? And that's that's the difference between that. Who you're gonna who you're gonna invite to camp and who's gonna get an opportunity to come in here? Um, Josh Kelly was a walk-on. Christian Pavico was a walk-on. You know, we've had since I've been here, and just the one year I've here, we've had two huge contributors from that standpoint. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a big part of it. And we've made a big push um, in the walk-on group. So I think this group we're bringing in this year um, will be reflective of that, and you guys will get a chance to. Uh, see those guys when we get they get rolling around here in June. So, you had uh, J Justin Murphy leave. Was was he pretty transparent about the process that he was going to yeah, leave after know. getting that extra year? Um, yeah, I don't even know. I think Murph's on campus right now, going to school. So, I don't know what his status is, but we knew he wasn't going to play here any longer. I don't know if he can play medically. So that's probably a question for Justin. To be honest with you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. You.